Hey guys, Zot here. Rogue Mage is arguably the strongest composition in the game right now, having the potential to win games with a multitude of different strategies. One of these that all rank 1 mages are able to abuse is utilising the trinket Gladiator's Spike. In today's guide, we have a game from a mage considered by many to be the best in the world, Wildcard Gaming's Marrow, where he perfectly demonstrates how to use this trinket to its full potential. Throughout today's guide, you'll be hit with a bunch of questions to see if you can think like a rank 1 mage. In this game, Marrow is playing RMP up against LSM, which is Destro, Ellie, Mistweaver. The goal for this game is going to be pressuring the enemy Destruction Warlock utilising the Gladiator's Spike Trinkets during your setups. Jumping straight into the game, we see Mara's Rogue secure a full sap onto the Warlock, in which then all of his team throw their spikes before Marrow gets caught up into a lightning lasso whilst his priest gets stunned by the Earth Elemental. The opener for Rogue Mage is one of the most important aspects of the game. Securing a good opener can help set the pace of the game and put your opponents behind early. Knowing this, what would be your next move here? Okay then, let's see how Maru plays it out from this situation and see if you would have done the same thing. So what did we see? Well Maru trinketed the lasso before then trying to secure a polymorph onto the warlock which was unfortunately stopped. Remember your goal when spiting is to keep the target inside of the spite zone for as long as possible, and with the sap expiring it's going to be impossible for his rogue to follow up with another due to the recent change causing Spike to now keep you in combat. With the sap now expiring and the warlock poised near his gateway, what would your next move be? Let's listen to what Maro has to say. Well, yeah, you open, open. And I will yeah. eat some after. In this position, and with the enemy preventing him doing so, there is no follow up crowd control Maro could have secured before the Warlock is able to utilise his gateway and get away. So, as we heard, he communicated for his rogue to open, and he will, as he so eloquently put it, aids him afterwards. Remember, communication is one of the most important aspects of play in Arena. Thanks to Marrow's quick thinking and communication, him and his team were able to adapt and the rogue was able to open. So, play in the clip, we see how it plays out from here. So, you drink it, I, I am so, as we see, the enemy warlock instantly reacts to the kidney shot by then trinketing and using his gateway to get away. Alright then, so where do you go from here? We force the warlock's trinket as well as his gateway and still have all of our offensive cooldowns left. Take a second to think about it. If you was in this position, what would be your next move? So, you may be thinking we have Combustion, Vendetta and Smoke Bomb available. So, we could utilise all of this inside of a Kidney Shot and secure a win on the Warlock with no Trinket once Diminishing Returns are back up. Well, let's hear what Maro and his team have to say. Billy. Let's continue. Yeah, we're well, we blind. We just win on blind. Yeah, we can just hit him a bit. Dead, chill like, a bit. Blind is, is deadly. Listening into their comms, Maro and his team communicate that their next blind spite setup will be deadly and until then just to hit the warlock, reduce damage and chill. This is because the enemy warlock has no trinket, so we're going to be able to blind him into a triple spite which he then has no way of getting out of. So essentially now it's just a waiting game. Forward in the clip, Marrow and his team are just looking to reduce as much damage as possible, saving everything they have until their gladiator spite trinket is back and the next setup can commence. Now with spites back up, Marrow and his team can commence their next spite setup, with his rogue vanishing and starting off with a blind as all three of his team throw their spites. Using our knowledge from earlier, what do you think is going to be Marrow's goal now? Let's take a look and see if you was correct and have the same idea that Marrow does. I've got a fear early here. Fear early on pet. A sheep, okay, a sheep, a sheep, a sheep, a sheep. Yeah, good, good, good. We sheep this but we sheep this. So, with no interrupts available, Maru secures a full polymorph before then instantly casting another, predicting the obvious dispel. Keeping the warlock inside the spike for as long as possible, it's now time for the rogue to open and to pump as much damage as possible. Unfortunately, though, Maru gets peeled by an incap into lightning lasso. 
Pausing the clip here, Mara is stuck inside of a full lasso during their game winning spike setup. We saw him commit his human trinket earlier in the game, so doesn't have it available. But having ice block and combustion ready, what would you do in this situation? Let's take a look and see if you are correct and jump back into the comms. It's fine, it's fine. No, 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 it's fine, it's fine. I would root him off, like, it's still fine. I would pump him after the wall. Blocking this lasso and then going hard with your combustion may have seemed like the right play here. Albeit an offensive play, I think most of us would have guessed the same thing. As we heard though, Marrow had different ideas. We mentioned this earlier, but when spiting, your goal is to keep them in the zone for as long as possible and to get the stacks to ramp up. The Warlock has already committed his unending resolve, so he's going to be taking less damage. Maro communicates that he will keep him inside for as long as possible with a Nova and then he's going to pump him after. Remember, the stacks remain even after you exit the spike. And after being locked inside for the full duration, Maru then unloads as the unending resolve expires, popping his combustion and securing a dragon's breath onto the monk before then casting a polymorph into Re on the imp dispel, causing the warlock to go down despite the enemy team's best efforts. With that conclusion, how did you guys do? Did you have the same thought process as our rank 1 mage Marrow throughout this video? Okay then guys, that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching and as always, if you have any more questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment below.